Michael Lemke here. Before we dive into today's video, I want to take a moment to thank each one of you. I had to press that record button to express my sincerest thanks. All your likes and comments on the last videos really meant a lot to us, and that is all to my request for this video, your engagement. Your comments, sharing and liking is most important. It is a fuel for us to create new content. And how did we get this new content? You remember, a couple of weeks ago, I was in Paris at the Ritz Mobile. My friend Richard Michael Owen tells me about a European restoration powerhouse. They are the visits behind a Ferrari begging first place win at the Cavallino Concourse. That got me thinking. Someone mentioned that place before, but with a twist. They are masters in Jaguar e -tubs. That's all it took. I grabbed my cameraman, drove up to the place, and here is the result. I can only promise you what we have seen here yesterday, and that is why I'm taking the video. What we have seen here yesterday is most interesting for all of you, not only for the originality freaks, but also for those who want to drive the car. And this company is actually doing both. And we will go into details and I'll show you what it means. No expense spared and authentic restoration or a basic standard restoration, which obviously is a different in the price. Just follow me and you will be impressed what we see here. And here eventually we are with the founder and owner of this company and uh, Mark. So please can you explain to our viewers why and when you started the company? Uh, the company started from 2003 and uh, now we have around 14-15 uh, cars in restoration, mostly Jaguars, but uh, sometimes we do in some Ferrari or a couple of Mercedes. Your goal is yeah. not to just restore a car, but you yeah. want to have it the best you can get. Yeah. So your this own your own standards are yeah, at the, we, at the high end. We 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 trying to do as good as possible, as correct as possible. This is a high leak. For example, if we speaking about the Ferrari, it's a very low quantity produced cars, and uh, this is uh, much more difficult to do as correct as possible because not so a lot of people who knows how it how it was. Yeah, and, at the beginning. <laughs> and then even if you know how it was. You yeah. still need to find the labor and yeah. the quality workers. Yeah. Then uh, so and because you couldn't find this, the quality standard, you try to achieve. So yeah. you you were taking all the work in house. Yeah. yeah. And that is you do everything yourself. Yeah. Only the liners in the in the engine blocks you yeah. have outsourced. All the rest. So yes. You do complete coach building. Yeah. You do the complete paintwork, yeah. you do the assembly, yeah. you do the interior. Yeah. And I've seen just right here someone someone is cutting and, and tailoring the interior for and I've seen it is a it is a, a suede green interior for a roadster and yeah. I've seen that roadster downstairs already. Yeah. Uh, it's a lovely looking car and so everything is cut in-house yeah so it's yeah. not you you just buy the the heights yeah. and you cut everything for every yeah. single car so there's no standard cut and everything is tailor-made for every single car and and i've seen the quality of the interior and it's amazing it yeah. is not from the shelf but it is tailor-made and and the passion these people are working for the cars so everybody Everyone in here is trying to improve his own job day by day. And it's kind of competition I've realized here between the people. So they came around yesterday asking me plenty of questions. And it's a, they always try to come better and better and better. And what I've seen yesterday, I have to say this is, I mean, there's an early car we're talking about later, a double digit car, and you will be impressed when we see the details. And that is what means no expense spared. So these yeah. guys go the extra mile, not only once, but every day, all day long. So, okay, and here we are with the workshop manager, Nauris, and I'm very pleased he speaks fluently English, and he is the director of all the work in this, in this workshop. And it may be best you explain what you do. Yes, so first, first and main objective is uh, basically to restore cars and uh, do it as well as humanly possible. 
uh, given the knowledge and um, and the possibilities that we have. Uh, this 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 is if if we are talking like in general. But uh, if we go go dive into the specifics, then uh, then we can talk actually for days. You, you yes, for days. And you research every day. And the interesting thing here is how many cars, how many E types you have at the moment for restoration. Uh, if I'm correct, if Roughly. I'm if I'm correct, then it's eight cars. Eight cars. So we have eight E types, but I think I've seen more because when you look over there, you have the range from very early cars to later cars. And uh, actually, when we go through the cars, I have seen a double digit o OTS car, and just behind us is a, is a very early, well, it's a fixed head coupe from December 61. Yeah, it's actually, it's actually one, of the, one of the last cars with the welded in louvers. So that is a special car, really. Yeah, yeah so, it is. And that is, we are going to have a closer look to that car. But I'm saying this, they have all the original cars here and they can compare and go into details. And let's have a look at this car. And this car is an early shape, the early fixed head coupe and it's in preparation. And this car is sold or is it? Uh, I think, I think, but I need to check. Uh, it is available for a purchase. It's available, so this one, they do because they have, you have 25 people here working here? In, around 30, in the, around, around 30. 30 people working here on the premises. So they're working every day on something. So it's not that they have one car, but they contemporarily do certain things in parallel. And this is an early car. And you know the color combination? Yeah, it's um, a palace and bronze with the beige interior. And I've seen another car, we'll have a look later, which is an OTS, which is an early OBL. Yeah. The same yeah. color combination. Yes. So that yes. would be a nice couple. Yeah, that's that's a very, very nice couple. And we actually. see the color later. So you are restoring this car and not having a customer yet, but you're interested to get this ready and started. You're not waiting for some no, to come. No, this 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 is what we usually do. We get a nice uh, nice matching numbers project car. We start it up, and then, uh, then uh, in parallel, we start looking for uh, for a potential customer. So, and this is, yeah, you see, it's a lot of body work to be done, but the parts are like the engine is probably already somewhere to be, get resleeved. And uh, uh, yes, of course, uh, we do everything in parallel. So uh, first, we take apart the car, uh, send out the body to to be the shot blasted. Uh, we, we don't do chemical dipping because it's not available in the region and, uh, and we do quite well with the, with the blasting. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and in parallel, of course, uh, all of the other pieces uh, get taken apart, uh, inspected, cleaned, uh, rebuilt, etc. etc. Et uh, so so everything, everything is getting prepared in parallel. In so parallel. as soon as the body is ready, as it's, uh, it's been built, it's been painted, it returns back to the assembly area and all of the small parts and everything is ready to be fitted to it. So there is a, let's say, minimum to no delay in the production process. Minimum to no delay. And when you ask normal people how long it takes to restore their car, usually they say it takes ages. I have customers, clients, where they are in the, in the bodywork process for, for more than, than three, four years. So it's a long process and in other shops, but your lead time to restore a complete car is how long? Around, okay, it, it, it always depends on, uh, on the state of the body that we start with because this is the main setback. Uh, but it's uh, for, the, for a Series 1 E-Type, it's around 14 months. So did you get that? 14 months to restore a complete car? Yes. And you do, and I've seen these cars here, they're all in different stages. And the good thing is, 14 months if you get if you know you get a car restored to your liking to your color you can choose a, a specification early or late fixed head coupe and it's a 14 15 months lead time you can wait for that so, and talk, talking about the lead time uh, you can always jump into the into the train because uh, sometimes we have a started car uh, like this one that is a uh, almost halfway done yeah so therefore you don't have to wait 14 months you have ah, to wait so get me six this, seven months get me this point get me this point so this company is restoring cars for sale their own 
but you can also bring your own project car, of course. drop it here, and they will restore it for you. Yes. So, so this car, for example, is not ordered, not sold yet. So if you would come in now with a project car, this would be parked and your car would be taken instead and started working. So it's not that you have necessarily, you have to complete this car before you take the next one. You can always... Uh, we, can, we can be flexible, but uh, normally, normally we like to finish what we have started. <laughs> yeah, we are busy, but, uh, but we, can, we can always, uh, let's say, um, uh, push around and uh, play with the cars that are waiting in line, if they're our own cars. So, so you could either bring your own project car to yes. get it restored, or you could say, I'm looking for a car like a fixed head coupe or an OBL, you have some cars, some donor cars or project cars in stock. You already have these cars or you might be able to find a car yes. Yes, the definitely. customer wants. So yes. if the customer wants an original certain color, 3.8, 4.2, you can find that car. You have some in stock, you have a network. Yes. You can find that car for the customer and start the restoration. Yes, definitely. So that is, that means that's- we, 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 provide, we provide worldwide logistics solutions. Uh, we help uh, customers uh, find and buy their cars and so on so on. Let's say uh, from A to Z, from start to begin, uh, from, from beginning to the end, it's like a, like a full service. Full service. So even though you we so even though the car is in the states or anywhere else, you get that here to your working place and start restoring it. The only thing you need to know is what the customer wants. Yes. And then you source that car. And obviously, the, if a customer says, "I don't mind," if it's a matching numbers car, you can find that as well. If they say, yeah. If they say, "I don't mind," the color, if it's original spec or not. If you have a, a payrolls car and you painted red that's fine with me you do that as well of course so let's see some other cars so in here we have an OBL car you can tell from the hole in here and this is uh, as you can see the original louvers and um, this is it this is a car within the first 150 yeah yeah so and this is you bought that to be available for sale yeah or is that already sold I think it should be available, but uh, as so, you know, situation changes and uh, better just inquire. Yeah, so this is an early car um, between 100 and 150 and they started the restoration. The body shell is that good that you only replace small bits. In yeah. It. So you don't take everything apart, but you only replace what I've seen here and there. Maybe the best you explain, like this bit here. Uh, basically, the usual places for uh, for an E-type uh, uh, internal uh, internal pieces, like some internal pieces of the bulkhead uh, floors, of course, uh, seat rails, uh, stuff like that. The, the, really, just just the usual thing. The only addition we have done is the inner seal strengtheners that really helps to keep the roadster together otherwise it, but it, it it is a bit flimsy from the factory it is. in our in our opinion so it becomes more stiff and more more harder to drive yeah and just gives you a better feeling yeah but all the rest is from the from the aesthetic is exactly the same yeah. as original yeah we even tried to replicate all of the spot welds uh, as good as possible of course and i've seen because i'm I, i'm interested in the early cars because they change between 10 cars, something always changed. Yeah. And the, this is a car we have here, and uh, I've seen that yesterday already. And this is a small detail uh, we see here, and I love to see that. The early cars, they had that, that little groove in here that looks like a cut, but that is how they were. This is original, and this is one of the cars, and uh, we have that in another topic. This housing for the reverse light is riveted. Yeah. So this is one of the last cars which had that riveted because I've seen another car in the 200 that had that welded. And, and this is something here, this, this detail. So you just don't take a standard trunk floor. No. You really take it all apart and make it as a Yes, we, we, we modified it to uh, look completely like it should be. So the, so the original inner, early inner strengtheners, they are uh, welded, uh, welded together from two pieces. They're not one stamping. Uh, so that this, this is what we did. 
So that there's there's a reinforcement in here, yeah. and that and that is what they did, and it looks exactly as original. Yeah. And this is one of the early cars. So originally these were riveted like this one, but then they started to weld these while this was still riveted. Yep. And a little bit later, this was welded and everything was welded yeah. in here. So that's details you need to know, and that is correct for this car. So this will be a nice OBL, and, and here we really can say, again, no expenses spared. So this is a high restoration, and, and I think you will not find anything to complain about or anything to point out which isn't original. I hope so. That's your goal, I know. Of course. These holes are smaller ones, and they had they had the metal. Yeah, they have a metal uh, metal bunks. So inserted. that is something rare. Can you show us that? Can you find that later? Or uh, just I can try. Yeah, just I for the try. people who haven't seen it. Mm. And you see these these cages here. They are they are for uh, captivated nuts, and uh, this was discontinued on later cars we have seen. So that is a thing is to hold the carpet yeah, to the tunnel. Should be so. In the paint shop, yeah. Paint shop. Paint shop is also a built-in facility. It's uh, all of the facilities are sitting in next to each other, so uh, it's very convenient that you don't need to tow around the car uh, around a ha half a country or it's, half, it's half a, a production city. line, really. Uh, it's, yeah, th that's what we are going for. <laughs> kind of. This kind is what of. we're going for. What you see here is a bonnet from uh, an, uh, one of the first first hundred cars. Uh huh. It's a. It's a almost 100 so uh it's it's also as we mentioned previously it's a pop palace and bronze oh uh, that's the one you mentioned before it was painted already yeah it's been painted it's being sanded down uh, for the final uh, final layer of the clear coat uh, so we do we do uh, triple uh, triple double layers of clear coat so uh, three times for uh, two layers of clear coat three times so it becomes quite thick yeah it becomes quite thick but it gives this 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 nice uh, glass mirror like effect and uh, and ah. there's always uh, you you don't need to worry about uh, sending it through yeah okay so you can polish as often yeah you can you can uh, and this and this is actually a thing so you can see this the obl car and i think this car you bought from a well-known person it's a Chuck, you know, yeah, from, from yeah, Monaco. From, from, yeah, so from, this car actually was owned by Chuck, and you bought it from Chuck, and that car was, he said, very, very original and complete. Yeah, it was. Uh, it had a few, uh, few, few pieces that uh, needed needed attention, but otherwise it was complete, original, and very rusty. Very rusty. Very, very rusty. Well, this is, you see this, how he, you can tell these sharp corners, yeah. that is how it was, because you had that rectangular seal in here. Yeah. And that is, when you see, most people haven't seen this. You see, this is really squared here. So, and that, you know, the early seals, they were, they had a U shape, basically. Yeah. A sharp cornered yeah. U shape seal. And also, also the, um, how do you call it? Headlight bezels. Uh, they're yeah. they're not mounted down with screws, but with self-tapping screws. Ah, in this one, yeah, you have no nuts in yeah, here. Yeah, there's ah. no nuts. It's just so that's just plates. So you cannot move them around. Later, they had the captivated yeah. cage, yeah. the cage yeah. with a nut in there. Yeah. And you could play a bit. Yep. This one has just the hole in here, and it's a one-time fitting. Yep. So, so it's very, very important to, to get it fitted uh, many times during the process of body work and, um, and, uh, and preparing for the paint. All the time. So Chuck, what are you saying? Do you like the work? <laughs> I'm happy you sold the car that I can see that here. And you can be proud. This car, I've seen the other bits, this car will be a showcase car. Yeah, we tried to, we tried to preserve as much of the um, original metal. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes on uh, let's say on the later cars, you would just swap out the whole panel. Yeah. But uh, here we tried to try to, to to fix it uh, piece by piece, just to just to keep it as original as possible. It's a lovely bonnet. This one is. Uh, with the metallic paints, we don't take any chances, and uh, yeah, we uh, we paint everything fitted. 
So, uh, so there were no mismatched, uh, mismatched color parts. So you can tell this is the early body shell. <laughs> and you see the welding spots here. So then we cover the number here. Chuck knows what number that is. Yeah. And, but we cover the number here. <laughs> so, but this car will be for sale. And uh, it is again like the coupe we have seen is bronze with beige interior. Yep, Lovely exactly. color combination. And um, so if you're keen to get a really original car, a really original with no expenses spared. And I think this is not a cheap car. You won't get that for 200, like the one no, seems he did no. and was sold at Retro Mobile. This is a serious car uh, that does cost serious money. Of course. And you get what you pay for. I hope so. This is all the extra work you're doing and uh, you will be one of the few owners who is a very, very authentic car. You see the welding line here? This is the early cars. The, the early cars had the four oblong holes in here. The, the, the extra holes, I think they misplaced something in the early production. And then they drilled another hole. And that's another interesting feature with the double outlets here. Do you see these? There's a small one and a longer one. This is an early feature. That is what you see, you have the same here. Usually later cars, they only have the long one. This is the double one, and that is only on early cars. And these are the, uh, the door hinges, the skinny ones with the grease nipple. They're already done, and this is, uh, I think, I don't know when they when they discontinued the grease nipple, but um, the later ones, I think that was in uh, October, they discontinued with that. They only had the skinny ones, and then a lot later they had the, uh, I think that was in 62, they had the chunky ones. So that is an original early door hinge. We were talking about the other car saying uh, no expenses spared and best you can get. And uh, I didn't agree with that, and I, and I got so many comments from you, well, let's use a repo parts and that's good enough. No, it is not. We can do better. You can do you can, better. You can always do better. And, and that is what I'm talking about, and that is my intention, to get it as good as possible, and then we can say no expenses spared. Yeah. And that is one example. Can, so this is the chrome stripe and below the front screen on the early car. Let's I can take it off. Let's take one. And I had, I had so many mails from people asking me, where do I get that chrome thing? So these people start to make them because they need them. Yes. You could buy a later one, yeah. which wouldn't be correct, but you make these things. Uh, not yet. We are uh, in right the in the middle of the process. This is uh, this is the latest objective for this uh, parts uh, part preparation uh, station. And, so, that, and that is actually for uh, for for an early car. Yeah, this is for, this an, is a for an OBL digit, for yeah. double digit OBL car. Um, so you need to have that. And if you can't buy that, you make it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and there's another thing I really like because this bit here. This, 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 is, this is the next one in line to be prepared. This is the... So that is something you like to see. This is the bit. This is the bit here, which is sitting on the soft top at the rear bulkhead and holding down the soft top texture. And this is on the early cars. Most of you haven't seen that. This is brass and filled with lead. Yes. So, and that you can't buy anymore, and these guys making this. This is a heavy piece, and the later ones, they have, they have the latches here, where you hold the, uh, the hood cover, and this is, you see this? The it actually has a small, small lip underneath lip, it. Uh, yeah, you see the profile? This is something here. This is how it was made. Yeah. It's actually quite similar to XK140 drop head uh, trim pieces, but uh, it's, it's, it's si uh, it looks similar, but it's not the same. That, yes, so, but that is what I call no expenses spared. And that is, there you see the details and, and the passion these people are putting into it. 
on, I haven't seen many cars, mostly the cars I see in shows, they have the later one and they don't bother. I, I love to see this. You might hate me for this, but I'm loving this and yeah, but it's one of the most distinguishable uh, features of the of the OBL cars. That's what you're saying. I totally agree. But would that make the car better? Just as a car, no. It, no. it just makes it uh, more original. More original. So, it doesn't make the car better, but it, it makes it more original and authentic. And if you don't do this, we will lose the authenticity of the car. Of course. So we know it is not the one which came with the car because that one got destroyed or lost. Yeah. So you make it to just to keep it as it is. And that is the difference between a really good restoration, a high-end restoration, or a standard basic restoration. And that is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about original parts and details. So this, this is the original um, hinge for the soft top and and you see this one this is the difference this is the very early one and that is sitting in here and these were cracking and breaking off so when you were tightening the the soft top this was cracking but this is the early one and this was changed very early i think within the first 200 cars to this start type but the first 200 should have that round thing here and of course they were broken you had to replicate these and this is a replica and that is again another extra mile to get things done so you were one missing and you machined that and you will replace this one with this one that it looks equal on both sides and this is how they were even though we know they were breaking and cracking we still or we you, yeah. you still yeah. go you still go to reproduce one to make it authentic and original and that is what i'm calling no expense spared even though it is not better but it is original Yes, we do our own steering wheels. Oh, we uh -huh. don't do we don't do repros. We don't chip them out. We take them apart, uh, polish them, uh, and then we re-trim them. Originally, some of them were uh, done in mahogany. Yeah. And look at that. We do bend our own uh, rims. Then we clear coat them. Uh, we can do them in a, in an early shape or in the later shape. Mm -hmm. Whatever is needed. Who, who can do that? Yes. Only you? Yes. <laughs> oh. Only you. And the yeah. metal, and the metal, is that... Polished, uh, polished in-house. That this is one polished. is the original one. That is an original one. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's you, you can tell, because you're, you're working with that, they have the round shape. Yeah, yeah. And the holes are rounded. This one is another one, original. Mm-hmm. Just polished. Yeah. Ready, and, ready uh, to be dressed. That's the later style, which is a yes. smaller mm -hmm. ring. And this wood will be on, on, this, on that one. This wheel. And I haven't seen Eagle. Eagle is doing similar things, but on another level. Mm -hmm. They have their low drag cars and everything, but you are doing the classic car business and you have everything in the house, apart from the engine. Almost everything. But who can say everything is in house? You have short ways, mm -hmm. direct contact to everyone. And that is, I, I, I don't know anyone else doing this. It's a, it's a nice, nice thing to so, hear. So, so that is something uh, to keep, if you can afford. Maybe the others can't afford it, mm -hmm. that they Maybe. outsource many, many things. It is easier. It is, it is both easier and harder to outsource. Yeah. It's harder to manage, but uh, it's easier because you don't need to constantly look after everything. Yeah. But to find all the skills mm -hmm. in one location, that is very hard. It is. Because in Germany you have to send things over there, mm -hmm. the trimming is coming from UK, so it's all spread and it's so hard to organize mm -hmm. and that helps you, I think, to shorten 
yeah. the restoration time to 14, 15 months. Yes, of mm. course. And and this is something. It's uh, and this is something not finished yet. It's not finished, but when do you see a non-finished case? <laughs> Never. You only see them when they're ready. Mm. Yeah. And this is the only chance to get something mm -hmm. in between. So this, and you can tell what this is for. This is for the, uh, is that for the E-Type Roadster? For E-Type. Yeah, for the, for, for the Roadster, yeah. So th this will be um, a, suit a suitcase for the uh, Roadster. And you will see later, we will show you the, the, the end product, how nice they are. So yeah, suitcases are also done done in house as the steering wheels. Uh, and this is for the for the coupe. Yeah, or? this is for yes. the coupe. Uh, you see, you get two of these for the coupe. So you will wonder what this is, and we show you later how yeah. they look, and they yeah. are lovely. And I think you only get them exclusive if you buy a car here. That is the extra bit, the extra mile. I said that yeah. it is not shortcutting here. It is the extra mile to do everything better than anyone else i love that i just love that yeah. and, and like a small uh, small piece yeah ah ah good you're coming good you're coming we're just discussing something here and that is something i don't know who's doing this but this is the, another extra mile they're doing and i you just saw, show me the bit this, you, the, this is the test piece so uh, so the, you see the leather here i was the thickness of the leather and when you bend them you get these chunky th stitches yeah th this profile here which is a bit chunky or a bit uh, solid yeah and to get it nice and and fine they trim it and they cut no no they cut not. something off here here you see that this is a lot thinner compared to this one so they trim they trim it down and then they start stitching it and then they get a very nice uh, luxury s stitching and when you compare that with this one you, you can tell this is the standard yep and this is the this, is this trim down the trim down the the really nice yeah here here you can uh, see it on the on the actual part so it's it's not like a it's not like pushed upwards. It's pushed. It's, 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 it's the same. It's kind yeah, of integrated. It's the same and, level. And I can when you see the difference next to each other. Yeah. Then you can tell. And this is what car is that for? This is for the Testarossa. For the Testarossa. Yeah. For the front. Yeah. So this noise. And can you show the trimming on the machine? Yes. Of course. And this is that that again that little extra bit. So what it does, it just basically cuts down uh, a layer, layer of uh, of a leather, kind of like a, like in a woodworking. Mm -hmm. So it becomes thinner, yeah, and then it's easier to bend. Yes, and that would be really nice for the um, for the piping. Yeah, then because for the, for the piping and uh, let's say in the in the X case where there are many trimmed uh, trimmed uh, leather trimmed uh, parts. Can you get that further? Bolted Wider? together. Yes. Uh, I see all the old uh, brake uh, pistons and, uh, and and cylinders. And can you explain what are you doing here? Uh, why why do you why don't you just buy new ones? It's easier, isn't it? <laughs> it is easier. <laughs> it is easy. It is easier. And uh, normally, actually, we are buying new ones. But as these um, these cylinders on OBLs are um, are exclusive to them. Uh, and they're easy to recognize, they don't have the C yeah, on here. Yeah, there's no C, there's a smaller letter, lettering on the so master the, cylinders. The later ones had the C on here for the casting. So these are all the originals without the C, and that is a feature of the early cars. Yeah. And again, you could buy simply buy other ones. Of course. You're fixing them. This, this is better safe than sorry. But good to, good to see things are being restored. And of course, this is more time consuming is more cost intensive than just buying new ones. Of course. But that is the difference. That is the difference. I'm happy to show that because very often you only see the car when it's done. And you get these, you compare this, this is the early one and this is the later one. And uh, also these, these get uh, overhauled and you get the stainless steel liner in here. So you can, you can preserve the original appearance but with an improved technology so you can do that as well not just buying 
aftermarket parts. Of course. And that, and that is my whole point I'm trying to tell, but you keep the original appearance. And you have here, I see this, I love to see these. These are the restored nylon nuts, the long ones, and of course that takes time. Yeah. It's, it's so much easier just to buy... Just to slap on new Chinese nuts. And Yes. <laughs> Could you say that? So I love to see all this, and I know what it takes because I'm restoring my cars myself, and I know what it takes, and it's so much more work and time, and it's a tedious job to get everything right. The engine shop. Morning, morning, morning. So this is another engine just being rebuilt. So what they do, the only thing they do, they, they rebuild the engine. The only thing you have outsourced, getting these liners. Yeah, we don't, we, we don't, we, don't uh, we have a small machine shop, but we um, can deal with uh, stuff like, uh, like cylinder boring and, uh, yeah. and uh, surface planing uh, for such large, large surfaces. We can do small surfaces, we can do a cylinder head, uh, we can do a block. But uh, this, this, yeah, this is what we outsource. Mm -hmm. We have a uh, trusty companions doing that. Uh, otherwise, all, all new, all, all parts that need to be replaced are inside are new. Of course, the pistons, liners, uh, chains. Yeah, we always uh, run them uh, on the test bench prior to installing in a car, uh, just just to make sure uh, everything is running smoothly. There are no leaks. Uh, uh, we can make some basic adjustments. Uh, also, we uh, normally what we use, let's say, on our standard production engines, um, we do the core plug straps mm -hmm. uh, just for the extra safety. These ones that they don't come out. That's, yeah. Oh, that's because sometimes they come out. They have uh, a tendency. You, and, uh, you, can, you, you can do everything as good as possible, but uh, there's still a little bit of chance of them popping out. So to the audience, I mean, this is something you can improve. Yeah. And yeah. it's nothing wrong with that, but would you do that on the early car to have no. an original? No. So this is something, and I totally agree with that. You can improve this because I know people who had these plugs coming out, and that's a disaster. So that's a safety feature I haven't seen anywhere else before. I like to see it. So that's something you can learn here. This, this is actually, this was done by the Jaguar racing team on the early racing cars ah, in the you 50s. See, you see, so I this, haven't this, done... This, this, this isn't the new technology. This it, is a, not. So you're just it, using that on the standard restorations? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. This, is, this is just the stuff that is borrowed from, uh, from the early racing days. Mm -hmm. What we also like to improve, we usually do one, two, three electronic ignition. Mm -hmm. We do al aluminum uh, core radiators. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just, to, just to deal with the known E-type uh, cooling issues. problems, <laughs> yes. issues, yeah. yes, uh, stuff like that. So it is, it is, it is, but that is, we, and we need to, to stress it. This is a standard restoration for someone who wants to drive the E-Type. Yeah, yeah. And this is not an authentic restoration, no. which is very different. And people, people tend to mix that. Yeah. If, and, and if I read, it's a highly original car with no expenses spared. That means for me, it is an authentic car as you do the, the double digit yeah. roadster. And this is a, a car to use let's say trimmed for the for the everyday use in a, in a modern traffic yeah so it's all you can have both and you have both kind of customers yeah yeah so I now want to see the early engine which you got from Chuck which came with the car so so this, uh, we, we, we cover the number here. So this, this engine is a double digit engine. Um, it's a matching numbers engine. Yeah. So that is the original engine of the OBL. We have seen the bronze metal one. And uh, let's go into some details here. And you see here, the bell housing. This is the, the smooth straight. And it's not stepped for the, for the um, starter. That is a typical early feature. And something I really don't see very often is the original dynamo. Uh, when you come close here, and that is, that is dated 1160, so November 60, and the number here is 22531A. And I think, I'm not sure, maybe there's a handful of cars worldwide which have that original dynamo. I have so many people contacting me asking for an original dynamo. I had, in the last 10 years, I have seen only two, and this is the third one now. 
So that is something uh, very unique. You might complain about these plugs, that they're not the correct, that they're not the same color, but they will be painted, so they, they, they just cut that. You see here, and that is something we talked about yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this, is, uh, this is temporarily uh, at the moment because so this, uh, while, the, while the correct manifold is still being polished, we wanted to start up the engine just to make sure once again, nothing leaks, everything is correct, and uh, the correct one will be fitted, uh, 50, fitted afterwards. So, uh, to show some people, do you have the original here, somewhere? Uh, yes, let's dig it out. Just to show the difference, because people are, and, and, and we know that has been discontinued at car number 200, maybe. So, you see the difference here? This one is, a, is called a swan neck because it has that certain shape and you have the flange on this side and you have that little nose here, that material here, and that is the original. And that is on the first 200 OBL cars, maybe only. And this is the later one, which goes straight against this, this uh, flange here. And uh, so that is the original one. And don't get confused with those who have grinded this off, machined this away, and make it look like the original has this flange here and the little nose. And that goes on here, but it was just needs to polishing again. Yeah, it's still and then, polishing again. And that is another early feature yeah. you have on this car. And it's adding up, it's adding up, it's adding up. And the carbs I see they are T marked, which is from the 60s. So 1960, so they have the T on here. That is the early, that is the earliest carbs for the E-type. So they have the three noses here with the, with, the, with the triple shafts. So there's one more coming in here and, and that is all original. Let's check another thing here. Yeah, this another is, early is, feature. This is a dipstick, and uh, just checking, and you see, ah, oh, yes, that's that's a correct dipstick with the dots. The E is for E type, and the dots is for the early cars. And this is one of my preferred color combinations. It's a palescent dark green with suede green interior. And this is a 4.2 Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a 4.2 roaster. Actually, one of the very early ones. It's, um, I think it's a late, late 64, early, early 65. Uh, it still has some features from the 3.8 cars. Uh, it's, this, this one has been very interesting to, to dug into, uh, to dig into. Uh, just just to find out about those those small features like the different brake booster pipe, uh, different uh, different heater heater uh, pipes, uh, as to compare to what we are used to uh, with the, with the, with the regular 4.2s. So this is again an example of how Jaguar developed the cars. Yeah. And here actually you see a few features. We can point them out uh, in, in a moment. Mm -hmm. But what I like to see here is the perfect fitting of the interior. You see everything is cut and, and it's all smooth and it looks perfect and that looks actually better than original I think. Yes, this, this, is, this is what we are uh, striving for. So this is these, these floor mats is all perfectly cut and tailored and suit and everything. So this is when you see a car in preparation during the assembly and uh, I see the insulation, I see the door Doors have, doors have been uh, heavily insulated with the modern materials uh, just to not have this, 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 this disgusting rattle, rattle can uh, sound when closing them. <laughs> and that is, and that is, and that is your, your, your thing. Yeah, your this, this is our thing. Norris loves to, to hear a solid noise when, yeah. when the door is yeah. closing. Yeah, that yeah definitely. Mercedes and I've seen, just look at the doors. I mean, that's Mercedes quality. Very often you find these. I mean, and, and oh, 
I love the door shut. That is just perfect. And everything, all the that on the other car. So usually Jaguar just had a small sound dimming mat there, but that is like it is it is like a ringing noise when you close yeah, the door. Yeah. And this Hated. is this is solid sound when you close the door. It has a little bit more weight, but it helps to close the door a little bit better and it just it sounds solid. We are also doing a much more insulation in the in the interior. Uh, first, we do it, of course, to, to, to level out uh, all of the imperfections uh, to, to, to have the carpet sit ni much nicer than from the factory. We are doing extra insulation actually on the rear wheel arches. Uh, if you're going on a light gravel, uh, let's say, uh, so the small stones wouldn't, uh, wouldn't resonate uh, through, through, throughout all, all of the body. Of course, it's convertible. It won't be quiet inside, but at least you won't have this, this, this uh, I don't know, rattle can, uh, rattle can noise once again. Is this cut off later? Uh, it it's still need to be uh, uh, trimmed and, uh, and fitted. So you see here? What we usually do on our cars, we uh, we are gluing down all of the carpets so the, yeah. so they they don't slide around uh, the interior. This is why they don't look exactly like uh, like original. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is our version of um, opening carpet to gain access to the to the transmission uh, oil change for the transmission oil, ch oil change. So this is not something you can buy elsewhere, this is what you no. make in-house? No, this is what we make in-house, yes. Because it is more practical and uh, it just looks better not moving around the carpet? Yeah. Actually, we, we do all of our interiors. We have two guys working daily on the interiors. Uh, of course, we get the materials from the same place that everyone gets them, but uh, we just uh, try to fit them maybe better, uh, more in, in a more individual way. Fitting an interior is an art. Yeah. It takes so yeah. much time and practice, yeah. but, but the first thing is to get the cutting right. Yeah, and I know we're going in the right direction because uh, once again, uh, guys selling the interior materials, everybody knows who they are. They are, they are always appreciating our work. And I can tell you, I can see that this is perfect. This is perfect. Maybe not totally original like that, that uh, the tunnel cover, but it's an improvement. And of, this is not a collector's car in terms of originality. And this is a car to use and drive. Yeah. yeah. So that is well distinguished. And you would do the original type on the other car. Yeah. And um, that's what I'm saying, is there's always a customer for a different purpose. Yeah. Uh, the thing, the thing is that uh, let's say we have the same level of quality for the for the work. Yes, it just it's just we can play around with the components yeah. and uh, with the way how they are fitted. Just let have a look at the different um, the intermediate pedal box. Yeah, is that, many people don't know this. This is they actually for for a year or two, I think. Oh, yeah, maybe between between sixty four and sixty five. This mm -hmm. was used. So this actually was type of the early pedal box where they had the bellow here, and then they revised it. That is one of the first with the brake servo, with the with this one here. Yeah, with the with the with the locked one. With with this one. So that was introduced, and you had that mounted to the bulkhead, and that was a, one of the first cars which had converted the brake to the later brake, uh, but that was only for a year. Mm -hmm. And you need to know what car you have to order the right spare parts and what to look out for. But this is, and then they, I see the pipe here, and I know the early 3.8s, some of you know the 3.8s, they had a house going around here that was a vacuum house. And later cars, they had a pipe running through the bulkhead, to the inside of the bulkhead, and the hose was connected to the, to the pipe. And this is an intermediate solution. Uh, how many cars do they have that? Maybe? No idea. Haven't, haven't researched it. A couple but, of hundred uh, maybe. Checked, checked against the parts manual. So this it's, pipe it's there and it's original and uh, is, we were done with it. It's very, very rare to see. It's just, you know, to have to know a bit more. Mm -hmm. So that is within, within the, the, the first 4.2s. And so this is still for sale. It has not been offered or advertised anywhere else. And if you like this green, opalescent dark green with the suede green in tea, I'm loving it. Uh, it reminds me of the D-type. Yeah. The racing D-type. Yeah. And it's a classic color combination. And uh, well, as we said, it is not totally original. No, not, it, not, not 100%, but it's it is, uh, it on, is, the, on the original side. 
and is perfectly restored. Mm -hmm. So that is something uh, you might like if you want to use the car. Has a tinted uh, front rear screen that looks marvelous. Yeah, we always use tinted screens and tinted, it looks tinted, marvelous. tinted side windows. Uh, they just look a bit better. Just a beautiful car that is, with a greenish, you know, everything. That must be stunning car when ready. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's say within a month, month, uh, month and a half to have it properly tested, uh, yeah. uh, just to make sure everything runs, drives, steers, brakes. So okay, so. Th this is now the uh, final assembly line. Yeah, yeah. This is final assembly area. This is uh, this is where we assemble painted uh, painted bodies and uh, make them nice drivable cars. So th this is everything is with gloves and uh, no no <laughs> no. This 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 is not a, uh, a sterile uh, facility. Uh, we have just regular people working uh, working on a regular jobs. So. Mm, assembling uh, the cars and yeah. making sure everything is perfectly. Mounted, tightened, yeah, and, of course, and fitted, of course. Yeah, it also has the tinted, tinted screens, uh, uh, and still Pilkington using yeah, the Pilkington. Yeah, we are using Pilkington. We are quite, uh, quite happy with uh, with their quality and uh, and, 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 the, and, the, and the fitment. And they were, they were the original producer, but here they use the not the heritage sign. Yeah. they use the other one, the triplex. Otherwise, this is just uh, one of the one of the regular projects. Oh, this is a car uh, that let's say we we sourced. Okay, so yeah. you sourced that in yeah. the name of the customer. Yeah, and and uh, prepared it to his liking. Yeah, and um, so that then you can choose what options you want, what what screen color, what, yeah. what shade, and but this 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 one is actually uh, matching matching numbers, matching colors car. Uh huh. So uh, so you source that as you wanted. The uh, let's say our uh, possibilities just just met there in the halfway. Nice color. Of yeah, the, of yeah. The this is a this this is a French gray soft top. Ah, is that was that original? Yeah, it's a it's a, this this is a completely original, original color combination. Ah, interesting. That gray, gray soft top. Yeah. You see something. This is behind the scene. Yeah, you can now see that uh, it's as clean from the inside as it is from the outside. So there's there's no uh, rust patches uh, hidden underneath the, the trimming, uh, and it's been uh, painted equally from the inside as, as from the outside. And I love to see the uh, the the um, the hollow chamber coating. In yeah. the inside the doors, inside the metal, all all of the internal parts. Uh, There's all the wax. Ex, you see wax, this wax coating in the trunk as well. Yeah, this looks pretty original. So you have all the coating here to protect the car, and and I see see some some modern stuff, but that is uh, of course that is not the, not not the very high end, authentic, genuine no. restoration. No. This is a car eventually to drive, to use, reliable, and which should last for. Another sixty years. I hope so. This this is what we actually like to see that uh, that the cars are being driven and uh, not just trailered uh, trail trailered around as a as a garage queen. So this this is actually prepared to last another sixty years, where the other one you would probably expect to end up in a collection, yeah, and, and yeah. be shown to public yeah. to just to show how things were yeah. to preserve these cars. So this will be a nice solid driver. Once once again, the same the same quality of the paint job, same quality of the of the engine as assembly, etc., uh, etc. Et it's just 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 the matter of uh, of, of, a, details. of a few different details, details, different components. But you can't source anymore. But generally, yeah. it's a high end restoration with the just with with standard products. Yeah, you didn't need to which which you can source. Luckily, yeah, we have the supplier. Uh, providing these like like the header tank like the modern radiator which is more reliable so that is all things you 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 add on and which is saving time and money yeah so and, that uh, is and, the reason. and, and they're, sometimes they're actually even uh, a bit more rel reliable than the used originals so this is um, this car then as I'm always saying you get what you pay for it is not a cheap car because people think you can get a nice roadster for 150,000. No, no, definitely. Those times are gone. No. So when you have everything done, 
And if, if, it, if it looks nice, it will backfire. Yeah, <laughs> yes, that is. Uh, so this car, I think uh, Mark said, these cars are in the range of 250,000. Mm, around, yeah. Around? Around. But that doesn't mean the original one, double digit, that is complete different league. Yeah, this it's a completely different ball game. So that that is that is uh, I would expect to pay twice as much for the other one because everything has to be double checked and parts have been sourced and restored. Where here, of course, you can shortcut or uh, just order a few things you can you can buy off shelf. Yeah, and uh, and meet the customers' needs. Let's say as uh, as it is with uh, with the aluminum calipers here. Yeah, these ones here, the bigger ones, yeah. they will really stop the car. And that gives you maybe a safer driving feeling. Yeah. And um, of course, when you have the smaller ones, you restore the ones on the, we have seen earlier. Yeah. The Dunlops, they are smaller, uh, but you get used to it. Once yeah, you, you know how the brake reacts. Yeah. So but don't compare a classic car with a modern car. Yeah, this, this is the main problem uh, sometimes with the, with, the, with the people that they're expecting just a little bit too much from, the, from their classical car. Because it looks all nice and new, it doesn't yeah. behave as a yeah. new car. Yeah. It still is a classic car and, and you have no, in this car you have no servo, but while driving you don't need the servo. I think the servo is only good when you do parking. Yeah, or turning around in a small space, but while you're on the road, you don't need the servo. The same with the five-speed gearbox. I'm I'm happy with the four-speed gearbox, and, and all the other things are just you need to learn how to handle the cars. Yeah, and it usually just boils down to the to the personal preference. That's it. That's what it. whatever is important for you maybe is completely irrelevant for me. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. This 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 is why. Uh, why we are open to any suggestions and uh, this is why we work with customers. It all depends what the customer wants but then obviously when you when the day comes when you want to sell the car you have to say what it is. Yeah. And, uh, and it might be that everything is done to your liking and you have difficulties finding someone else who likes the same thing. Yeah, could be so. So now if, is, if, if if you are willing to lose the originality, there yes. are a few things that you can do. You can um, you can extend the uh, rear bulkhead a bit more to gain a few more centimeters of seat travel. You can reposition the seat a little bit to the back, and uh, if you are willing to to lose the adjustability, you can uh, ditch the seat rails uh, altogether. Seat will uh, be a few centimeters lower. Uh, you can modify the pedal, pedal box uh, so the pedals don't sit that high. You can sit smaller steering wheel and uh, eventually, eventually you can end up uh, with an E-Type Roadster being comfortable for a person of uh, let's say 195 in height. So you said you can, you can place this rear bulk cut. Yeah, we can, we can extend it a bit more an to inch, the back. An inch further in. Yeah about an inch two three centimeters further yeah. to the back and then weld the weld the, the metal sheets together yeah and then you have another three centimeter extra travel back and then you can also have seen people moving the pedal box further down on the bulkhead we didn't move move it further down we just uh, modified the pedals itself uh, just so, the the pedals. They, so they don't sit that high in a, in a, let's say in a neutral position but yeah i've heard that some people that drill new holes and Possible. just move the whole pedal box right to the end. Yeah, we, we, we didn't want to go with that extent. Uh, we like to keep uh, keep our modifications subtle and, uh, if possibly, reversible. Mm -hmm. 
So there, there are things you can do if you are willing to to, uh, to lose originality. Yeah, Prepare yeah. to lose originality. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, what I'm saying is everyone's choice. Look at this. This is a piece of art, again, and that is that is obviously not original standard, but that is something that is an additional and add on. Yeah. This is something exclusive you make here in house. Yeah. And that is you can get these to your liking. You can choose the color, you can you can choose the trimming, you can choose you could even put your initials on here no anywhere problem. else. And this is something unique to add a special a personal touch to your car. Yeah. So this is a roadster thing. Let's uh, let's uh, let's call it a period accessory. Yes, exactly. And this is this is leather and you can get them in vinyl or leather. And let's see the, the inside. Oh, it's trimmed from the inside, it's lovely. It's lovely. And it's pretty light, it's not too heavy because you can still carry it and you just chuck it in the boot. Yeah. And it's done. And, yeah. and it looks and stylish. And it fits perfectly in the boot. Normally we include them uh, in the price as standard. Mm -hmm. Lovely. That is something unique you get. That is what you do. Yeah. Because definitely. you have the capacity, you have the skills. Oh, lovely. This is when you go for a wedding or for a honeymoon. Yeah. That is... Uh, and it's light. Yeah. I mean, it's light. That's, that's how it... Lovely.